UFOs have been sighted, a Nazi bunker has been discovered, NASA announces sounds from another world, seven fossil mummies have been found, and there are reports of mysterious highways in Antarctica. But what if I told you that beneath the hundreds of kilometers thick ice sheets of Antarctica, there could be a civilization or even multiple civilizations that once lived and thrived? Some may be skeptical and ask, how could any species survive in the bitter cold with constant snowstorms of hundreds of degrees Fahrenheit? And if they did exist, where have all traces of them gone? These are difficult questions that deserve exploration. If you're ready, join me in delving into the mysterious and controversial past of this continent and let's uncover what surprises history may reveal to us. History of Antarctic Exploration We often mistakenly believe that Captain Cook's voyage was the first evidence of humanity's initial awareness of the coldest continent on Earth. However, the truth is that around 350 years before Christ, Ancient Greeks were the first to conceive the existence of the South Pole. Through maritime explorations, they knew of the North Pole by the name Arctos, the bear, and concluded that for the world to be balanced, there must exist a similarly frigid landmass to the South, but in the opposite direction, the Ant Arctos, a land corresponding to the constellation opposite the bear. This was a speculative idea lacking much persuasive theoretical basis, but we have proven their whimsical notion at the time to be true. Humans officially landed, for the first time, on the largest wilderness in the world in 1821 since the hunting expedition of American seal hunter Captain John Davis, although not all historians accept this. By the winter of 1821, an officer and ten men from the British ship Lord Melville became the first group to endure a winter on King George Island, part of the South Shetland group north of the Antarctic Peninsula after the ship had set sail and failed to return for them until rescued the following summer. Since then and throughout the 20th century, exploration expeditions from various nations endeavored to explore from the peninsulas and neighboring islands of Antarctica to its mainland. The years from 1898 to 1922 are historically dubbed the heroic age of Antarctic exploration with numerous large-scale expeditions representing different kingdoms. They were the pioneering individuals enduring harsh weather and discovering ways to withstand snow and ice. However, this so-called heroic age of Antarctic exploration came to an end in 1922 with the death of Ernest Shackleton. Subsequently, the era of nations vying for territory on the icy continent officially began. Antarctica was the last continent to be explored and does not truly belong to anyone, yet to date, approximately 12 nations have declared sovereignty over parts of this land. In 1947, the United States officially launched the largest expedition to Antarctica up to that time with over 4,700 personnel, 13 ships, and 23 aircraft under the banner of Operation High Jump. Upon landing, most of the coastline was photographed by the expedition to map out the region. By 1961, the Antarctic Treaty was signed aiming for peace and suspending territorial claims. By 2019, the number of signatories had increased to 54 parties. Today, the main routes to Antarctica have been established, and the continent is less perilous for scientists to explore on foot. Humans no longer need to venture to Antarctica aboard small wooden ships, unsure of their location or what lies ahead. The risks of enduring forced winters in cramped conditions within sparse tents, ice caves, or capsized boats, facing starvation, and resorting to catching passing penguins or seals for survival have become a thing of the past. With the technological advancements of the 21st century, aircraft are increasingly used alongside reinforced steel-hulled ships capable of breaking through sea ice with reduced risk of becoming trapped. Nowadays, those traveling to Antarctica undergo extensive training beforehand and receive further instruction on coping with environmental risks and threats upon arrival. The Cracks of History 
Upon re-examining the historical narrative from humanity's awakening to the existence of Antarctica until its formal discovery, one might notice faint or glaring gaps in the maritime maps that are still preserved. These serve as evidence of humanity's early exploratory history, from primitive fur-clad individuals in caves to those who sailed the oceans, linking distant lands together. Antarctica remained a mysterious land, seemingly obscured and elusive, until Cook personally confirmed its existence. I am genuinely intrigued by its seemingly silent era, as if ancient Greeks had recognized its existence around 350 BC. How did other civilizations view Antarctica from then until 1773? Most people believed it to be barren, Antarctica lies at the farthest southern reaches of the Earth, nearly entirely cut off from human civilization. For many years, world maritime maps illustrated it as an empty sea, because humans had not yet developed ships capable of withstanding the rough seas to explore this mysterious region. However, the truth is that before the 18th century, there were many faded maritime maps indicating the existence of Antarctica. Among them, the most famous, is the Piri race map. Many speculate that this map may reveal ancient secrets of lost civilizations on our planet. Piri race was an exceptional Ottoman naval officer and skilled cartographer born in either 1465 or 1470 in Gallipoli, a port city on the Dardanelles Strait. He embarked on a seafaring life from a young age. Initially, as a privateer supported by the government, essentially a licensed pirate, and later as part of the Ottoman navy, where he rose to the rank of admiral. Piri Reis participated in numerous campaigns and naval battles, such as the conquest of Egypt in 1517 and the siege of Rhodes in 1522. He had a keen interest in geography and maps, collecting charts and maps from various sources, including Europe, Arabia, China, and India and interviewing sailors, traders, and travelers who had visited various parts of the world. Piri Reis used this information to compile his navigational maps and books on geography. In 1513, Piri Reis completed his most famous work, a world map that he gifted to Sultan Selim for the ninth Sultan of the Ottoman Empire as a present. This map was praised by Sultan Selim Mai and kept in the royal treasury for many years. However, it was eventually forgotten. In 1929, the Turkish Ministry of Education officially commissioned researchers to inventory non-Islamic artifacts in the Topkapi Palace Library, and the famous map was officially brought to light once again. Topkapi was the residence and administrative center of Ottoman sultans for over 400 years, from the mid-15th century to the 19th century. In 1924, with the decline of the Ottoman Empire and the establishment of the Republic of Turkey, Topkapi Palace was reorganized and turned into a museum. Many experts were then hired to inventory the treasures in the palace, including Gustav Adolf Desmann, a German archaeologist. On a normal morning at work while arranging ancient books, Desmann accidentally discovered an extremely delicately drawn map. Based on his knowledge, he immediately felt the difference in this map and reported it to the management board, but no one paid attention because, after all, Topkapi Palace also hid many secrets, more interesting than an old map. It was not until a White House official in charge of logistics communications discovered the secret behind this map that Piri Rice became the most controversial map at that time. What is now known as the map of the Turkish Admiral Piri Rice was just a fragment of an original, much larger map that represented the entire known world. This remnant represents the Atlantic Ocean, the west coast of Europe and Africa, and the east coast of the Americas. Paul Kayla confirmed that this map was dated around the Islamic year 919, which corresponds to our year 1513 AD. According to the records left in the palace, Race created the map we see today by compiling from 20 older charts and eight. These notes were transcribed by the Turkish scholar by Hasan Fehmi and published by Yusuf Akura, the president of the Turkish Historical Society in 1935 in the work Piri Reis Haritasi, 
Later, they were reprinted by Ise Afetinan in The Oldest Map of America in 1954. It is noteworthy that although this map and other maps contain clear and fully readable texts and annotations, the authors present them as evidence for their extravagant arguments by only quoting a few lines. So what does Piri race have to do with Antarctica? The truth is that both Queen Maud Land, along the ice-free northern coastline of Antarctica, were described relatively accurately on the map. How could humans accurately depict the ice-free northern coastline of Antarctica? It's important to note that the first human landings in Antarctica did not occur before 1820. Additionally, Queen Maud Land had no significant exploration before Norwegian expeditions beginning in 1891. At the time the Peary Race map was created in 1513, Cape Horn had not yet been discovered and Ferdinand Magellan's circumnavigation voyage would not occur until six years later. This raises the hypothesis that, at some point, there may have indeed existed a vibrant and advanced civilization until they were destroyed and submerged by nature. Charles Hapgood's Story In 1954, in a famous house in New Jersey, USA, the light was still on late into the night. At this time, Einstein, who was busy preparing a speech about Israel, received a phone call from his close friend Charles H. Hapgood. Professor Hapgood was a historian and a graduate of Harvard University. The two had known each other for a long time, having met at a scientific conference. According to Hapgood, although Einstein was a scientific expert, he was personally very casual and romantic. Their conversations not only revolved around cold scientific knowledge, but also delved into the history of the universe. By the flickering light in the night, Charles H. Hapgood enthusiastically recounted to his close friend his journey of discovery with the ancient Peary race map and the hypotheses that no one could have imagined. Given that humans had already set foot in Antarctica, Einstein didn't seem too surprised if someone discovered a maritime map containing this continent. So he asked his friend again, Was that why you called me in the middle of the night like this? It was then that Hapgood realized he had forgotten a crucial detail, telling Einstein about the time the map was drawn, 1503. The conversation immediately fell silent. But the story didn't end there. In his research of the annotations and surviving handwritten notes from the map fragment, Hapgood discovered that the creator of the drawing referenced about 20 other maritime charts before completing his masterpiece, many of which were ancient maps that had appeared long before. Among them, one was purportedly drawn during the time of Alexander the Great, an unimaginable feat considering Alexander was born around 365 BC. At that time, humans were unaware of the existence of the Americas, let alone an icy continent called Antarctica. In his 1966 published book, Hapgood wrote, it is not known whether Hipparchus made maps, but even if he did, he could not apply his predictions to the globe in his time because of the lack of necessary data, such as accurate latitudes and longitudes of many places. This was a limitation of Greek map science at the time. However, maps like Piri Reis and others that we have studied indicate that in the past, there may have been tools used by those who understood the precise size of the Earth. These individuals seem to have also traveled extensively, showing familiarity with the Americas and mapping the coastlines of Antarctica. We will see more evidence of this, evidence that suggests the creators of these maps possessed a more advanced science than that of the Greeks. The evidence presented by the ancient maps appears to suggest the existence in remote times, before the rise of any of the known cultures, of a true civilization, of a comparatively advanced sort, which either was localized in one area but had worldwide commerce, or was, in a real sense, a worldwide culture. This culture, at least in some respects, may well have been more advanced than the civilizations of Egypt, Babylonia, Greece, and Rome. In astronomy, nautical science, map-making, 
and possibly shipbuilding, it was perhaps more advanced than any state of culture before the 18th century of the Christian era. It was in the 18th century that we first developed a practical means of finding longitude. It was in the 18th century that we first accurately measured the circumference of the earth. Not until the 19th century did we begin to send out ships for purposes of whaling or exploration into the Arctic or Antarctic seas. The maps indicate that some ancient people may have done all these things. They could be people previously unknown. Likely candidates are the Minoans, the ancient sea kings of the island of Crete, and the Phoenicians, who were the greatest ancient mariners in the world for over a millennium. To further support his argument, Charles H. Hapgood also studied numerous other ancient maps dating from the 1500s to the 1800s. In his book, Maps of the Ancient Sea Kings, the American professor referred to the Orontaeus Phineus map, a world map drawn by a French mathematician and cartographer in 1531. Orontaeus Phineas contributed to a broader Renaissance interest in accurately mapping the world, naturally including Antarctica, as we recognize it today. Charles H. Hapgood's analysis delved deeply into the view that these historical maps provide profound insights into prehistoric knowledge of Antarctica. Hapgood asserts that the maps depict the Antarctic region, particularly its location at the South Pole and its complex features, implying a level of geographical understanding beyond the norm of the 16th century. Hapgood suggests that the Orontaeus Phineas map accurately represents Antarctica because it predates its ice cover. The depiction of a vast landmass in Antarctica, along with detailed coastlines, rivers, and mountain ranges on the map, indicates a profound knowledge of Antarctic geography. According to Hapgood, such knowledge would not have been attainable by contemporary European mapmakers due to limited exploration of the region at that time. Furthermore, he argued that the level of accuracy and detail in the Orontaeus Phineas map suggests that the mapmaker had access to sources of information or advanced techniques that enabled the creation of such an accurate presentation. These sources could have originated from a lost civilization or a pre-existing mapmaking tradition with knowledge predating known historical records. Hapgood's explanation of the Orontaeus Phineas map sparked academic debate, with some questioning the validity of his claims and others exploring alternative explanations for the depiction of Antarctica on the map. At that time, there were not many supporters of his theory of crustal displacement. Most people found it difficult to accept when established knowledge was challenged by new hypotheses. Antarctica has no ice or snow. Hapgood left behind a profound question about where that advanced civilization went and why they completely disappeared from Earth. Additionally, the notion of an unfrozen Antarctica raised many questions that we have only begun to answer today. Hapgood's hypothesis may relate to one of the world's largest mass extinctions and the mystery of why Antarctica drifted and became completely isolated from the other continents. Antarctica hasn't always been covered in ice. Due to continental drift, this landmass slowly shifted towards the South Pole and remained unfrozen for nearly 100 million years. Then, about 34 million years ago, a dramatic climate change occurred at the Eocene-Oligocene boundary. The climate suddenly turned frigid and created an ice house at both poles, as we see today. Antarctica is now the largest ice mass on Earth, covering an area of over 14 million square kilometers. However, hundreds of millions of years ago, this continent was once a warm region with a mild climate and lush vegetation. Geological findings indicate that East Antarctica is a craton, a piece of ancient continental crust and its uppermost layer consists of igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks, some of which are over 3 billion years old. 
Conversely, West Antarctica is relatively younger and primarily composed of volcanic rock forged in the Pacific Ring of Fire during the breakup of the supercontinent Gondwana in the Jurassic period. Gondwana was a supercontinent of ancient origin, forming about 600 million years ago towards the end of the Ediacaran period, predating even the existence of the supercontinent Pangaea. Planets. Starting around 200 million years ago, Pangaea began to break apart into two smaller supercontinents, Laurasia in the north and Gondwana in the south. About 180 million years ago, Gondwana, which included parts of Antarctica, Africa, Australia, India, and South America as we know them today, started to separate into the more familiar continents we recognize today. Basalt rocks found on the eastern margin of Antarctica, match rocks found in South Africa, representing early rifts in Gondwana. Antarctica was much warmer during the Mesozoic era, 66, 252 million years ago, compared to today. It once hosted a temperate rainforest with dinosaurs and other ancient creatures during the Cretaceous period, 66, 145 million years ago. It existed as an important land bridge in the Southern Hemisphere. For tens of millions of years, South America, Antarctica, and Australia remained connected, allowing flora and fauna to move across large areas. Scientists are uncertain exactly when Antarctica became a distinct landmass, becoming isolated from Australia and South America. Recent research has revealed that the Drake Passage, the sea area between Antarctica and South America, and the Tasman Gateway, the sea area between Antarctica and Australia opened up around 34 million years ago, marking the transition from the Eocene to the Oligocene epoch. Following the final separation, Australia moved northward while Antarctica began drifting southward. The opening of the Drake Passage and Tasmanian Gateway between the continents allowed cold water to continuously circulate Antarctica, isolating the continent from warm ocean currents and leading to its glaciation. Evidence for ancient temperate forests was discovered in 2018 by Professor Eric Goulbranson and John Isbell from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Before this discovery, the research team found fossilized remains of 13 trees estimated to be over 260 million years old. This indicates that the forest developed before the appearance of the first dinosaurs at the end of the Permian period. Gondwana was once home to diverse plant and animal life, including the enigmatic Malvinox Hosan community, which inhabited the seas that are now the land of South Africa. This community primarily consisted of trilobites and bivalve animals, along with some soft-bodied and spiny-skinned creatures. This community was once extremely abundant on the ancient Earth, but abruptly disappeared around 390 to 385 million years ago during a 5 million year hellish period of climate change, bearing similarities to the climate change impacts we are currently causing. Many scientists believe that 90% of species were wiped out during this event, including the Antarctic forest. Professor Gulbranson suggests that these fossils will provide a glimpse into life before the mass extinction, potentially helping us understand the causes of this event. They may also offer clues about differences between modern and ancient vegetation. Gulbranson's work could help us understand the impacts of contemporary climate change and how global warming might lead to forest migration toward the North Pole in places like Siberia and Northern Canada alien civilization. In 2006, a Google Maps user discovered a black pyramid structure in the middle of a vast snowy field. From satellite images, the structure appeared to have four sloping sides resembling the Great Pyramid of Giza, with two smaller pyramids nearby, resembling the pyramid complex in Egypt. Some speculated that it was built by an ancient civilization from 10,000 years ago when Antarctica was warmer, while others suggested it was the work of extraterrestrials. However, geological experts have a different view. They believe that this is just a mountain that looks like a pyramid. 
geology professor Eric Rigneau from the University of California, Irvine, asserts that a pyramid-shaped structure is not impossible. He explains that pyramids in nature are a common feature in ice-covered regions formed by the convergence of ice streams on each face of the mountain. Dr. Mitch Darcy, a geologist at the German Geological Research Center, confirms that this is not a complex geological structure and is not a unique coincidence. According to Darcy, these geological features are scientifically referred to as nunataks. Simply put, they are just rocky peaks protruding from an ice stream or an ice flue. However, we still know very little about ancient history, and humans may have been living on Earth longer than we think. If you don't believe it, just look at the incredible structures built by vanished civilizations all over the Earth. They are the most vivid evidence of an advanced civilization that may have helped or existed before the era of humans. In a time when we hadn't yet invented tractors or cranes, who erected over 900 giant human head statues, Moai, scattered across Easter Island? With such enormous weight and size until now, nobody knows exactly how they were crafted and transported. Or consider the case of Puma Punku in Tiwanaku, Bolivia. It's a complex of massive stone blocks intricately carved and perfectly squared with surfaces as smooth as polished wood. The material is 100% granite and diorite with a hardness comparable to diamonds. Upon close observation of these stone blocks with the naked eye, one can spot some complex stone structures, as if they were created by machinery or even laser cutting devices. Many stone slabs exhibit straight patterns and uniform depths and are fitted together tightly like a single stone block. Researchers do not understand how such precise works on such a large scale could exist, even with today's laser cutting technology, which would struggle to achieve this type of craftsmanship. The level of precision reminds one of the massive stone blocks fitted together so precisely that not even a strand of hair can pass through at the Great Pyramid of Egypt. However, to this day, ancient Egyptian researchers still cannot find an answer to the mystery. Why, alongside millions of tons of beautifully carved stone, can't any copper tools be found throughout the Giza Plateau? All of these things seem to quietly affirm the appearance of a highly advanced alien species far superior to humans, Sphinx. Consider the possibility that these statues may have existed longer than the lifespan of ancient Egyptian civilization. Look closely at the construction of this statue. What figures come to mind with its towering lion body and human head? Could these be gods from beyond the starry sky? Perched majestically on the Giza Plateau, on the west bank of the Nile River, about 10 kilometers from the capital Cairo, the Sphinx is an iconic architecture of a splendid civilization. The rulers of Egypt viewed this as a symbol of the sun god, hence they named it hor em Aket, meaning Horus of the horizon. For thousands of years, since its creators fell, the Sphinx has stood steadfast amidst the golden sands, keeping watch over the resting kings within the pyramids. There are many contrasting views about the existence of the Sphinx. In Greek, Sphinx means strangler, hence to them, the Sphinx represents a dangerous, malevolent force. In contrast to the Greek perspective, the Egyptian Sphinx with a male head symbolizes power and wisdom often placed at the entrances of temples and pyramids akin to a gatekeeper. Nearly all inscriptions remaining on tablets related to it call it the Terrifying One. The colossal Sphinx is associated with the sun god Ra, as well as the god appearing in the form of a wild dog, Anubis, the god of the cemetery, the city of the dead. Over 1,000 years after its construction was accepted, it was excavated and restored for the first time. While the enigmatic smile of the Mona Lisa has consumed the efforts of countless researchers in endless debates without conclusion, the stoic and enduring countenance of the Sphinx seems to be a subject less frequently discussed among the mysteries surrounding this statue. 
Most Egyptologists agree that the face bears the closest resemblance to that of Pharaoh Khafre, a logical conclusion given that it was commissioned during his reign. There are many legends associated with the Sphinx, but the most famous is the tale of an Egyptian prince named Thutmose. Adored by his father, Thutmose became a thorn in the side of his siblings, with some even plotting to kill him. In search of peace, Thutmose left home and spent much of his time in the desert, remembered as a strong and skilled hunter and archer. During a fateful hunting trip, Thutmose arrived at the Sphinx and prayed. One of the promises the prince made to the Sphinx was that if he became the next pharaoh, he would free the statue from the sands of the storm. At that time, the Sphinx was buried up to its shoulders in sand. The prince later became the ruler of Egypt and fulfilled his promise to the Sphinx. He initiated a large-scale excavation and gradually unearthed the statue's two feet. Between them, he placed a granite slab known as the Dream Stele. The head of the Sphinx, adorned with a traditional style of headdress, towers over 20 meters above the ground, lying silently atop a body carved in the shape of a lion with a length of nearly 60 meters. It appears that the head of the statue was made from different materials and colors compared to the body, which was hewn from solid limestone blocks on the Giza Plateau. Despite the considerable passage of team, the head and face of the statue must have undergone significant erosion like the body, yet they show few signs of erosion. The head and face of the Sphinx have changed shape from their original form since this monumental work was first sculpted. The sides of the head are quite smooth, and a glance reveals a brighter color on the body compared to the head. In Tony Bushby's book, The Secret in the Bible, a broken Sumerian column mentions a story that took place at Giza involving a lion-headed creature with a hidden passage in the sand. All evidence now indicates that the body of the Sphinx was carved from natural rock and eroded by heavy rains during the time of the lush Sahara Desert. This helps us date the construction of the statue, aligning with the time frame calculated by Robert Bauvel and Robert Schock for the Three Great Pyramids around 10,450 BCE. The name Sphinx was given to the statue about 2,000 years after its construction due to its similarities with the mythical creature in Greek mythology, a lion's body, a woman's head, and eagle wings. The English word Sphinx originates from ancient Greek based on the legend that the Greek Sphinx would strangle anyone who couldn't answer its riddle. The mysterious nature of the Sphinx has attracted a lot of attention and led to countless hypotheses about its supernatural powers. One of these is the idea of a pathway leading to the legendary city of Atlantis. Rumors about this connection began when Plato started writing about an imaginary society. In the early 20th century, American psychic Edgar Allan Case claimed to have seen a chamber inside the Sphinx containing the secret location of Atlantis which he predicted would be discovered in 1998. In reality, there are many legends about various secret passages related to the Sphinx. In 1995, a group of workers renovating a nearby parking lot discovered a series of tunnels and passageways, two of which led underground close to the Sphinx. Between 1991 and 1993, while assessing the erosion of the Sphinx using seismic surveying, Researcher Anthony West's team found evidence of hollow spaces resembling rooms just a few meters beneath the ground near the base of the Sphinx. However, further research was not permitted. Therefore, this mystery remains unsolved to this day, perplexing many scientists. Napoleon stared at the statue intently and displayed genuine fear while archaeologists, explorers, historians, and tourists have been studying it. But the Sphinx remains one of the most enigmatic structures of the ancient world. Location of the Pyramids Today, only a very small portion of the mysteries surrounding the Egyptian pyramids have been solved, and the colossal structures weathered by the hot desert sands for thousands of years still hold many astonishing truths about their construction. 
the awe-inspiring Great Pyramids are notable not only for their immense scale, but also for the precision and mathematical coherence of their design. Indeed, achieving such precision today would be a remarkable feat with all our modern technology and tools. This raises the question, how could an ancient civilization have achieved such a marvel? Let's start with the Great Pyramid of Giza. Many consider the Great Pyramid to be one of the oldest, greatest, and most perfect scientific monuments on Earth, constructed thousands of years ago. The massive pyramid was built for Pharaoh Khufu and completed around 2560 BCE, remaining the only intact wonder among the seven wonders of the ancient world. Constructed like giant tombs from bright white limestone blocks of about 2.3 million tightly bonded stones with a total weight of 5.9 million tons. The pyramid was designed to conceal the dark secrets of the deceased. As we rewind through time, it becomes increasingly challenging to unravel what happened, when, and how. Until now, scientists still cannot understand how the ancient Egyptians transported and built such massive structures. Additionally, the Giza Pyramid Complex presents geographical challenges that astronomers cannot fully decode. One of these challenges is the alignment and positioning of the pyramids with three stars in the belt of the Orion constellation. To this day, this story remains one of the most intriguing discoveries about the pyramids from humanity's exploration of the desert. In 1979, while a civil engineer of Belgian origin, born in Alexandria, named Robert Bauval, was waiting at Heathrow Airport in London for the time his plane to take off to go to his workplace in Sudan. He purchased a book entitled The Serious Mystery, written by Robert Temple, an investment of time awaiting solutions, his plane's takeoff time. It was a thrilling book that turned his life upside down. The book talked about the beliefs of a tribe in Africa known as the Dogon tribes, who used to hold ritual ceremonies for thousands of years. This ritual was a simulation of the movement of Sirius, which is one of the brightest stars in the sky and belongs to a group known as the Great Dog. Robert Temple, the author of the book, expressed the belief that the astronomical information possessed by the Dogons must have been passed down through thousands of years, that it had reached them from the ancient Egyptians, and that the investigation of this secret should be sought in the history of ancient Egypt. The outcome of this book was a detailed preoccupation of Robert Boval that took more than a decade. Finally, he came up with a theory that revolutionized Egyptology. Robert's realization came during a night in the Saudi Arabian desert, where he stargazed with a French friend. As they observed a group of three stars in the sky that formed a line, with the smallest star noticeably distant from the others, Robert experienced a breakthrough. At that moment, looking up at the stars, he recognized the parallel to the alignment of the pyramids of Khufu, Khafre, and Menkaure. Just like the three stars in the sky, the positioning of the pyramids mirrored a celestial pattern. The configuration of these pyramids, with Menkar slightly offset from the line connecting Khufu and Khafre, suddenly made sense to Robert. The epiphany struck him with the realization that the ancient architects and engineers who designed the pyramids likely incorporated this celestial alignment deliberately. The alignment of the pyramids reflected a cosmic blueprint echoing the arrangement of stars in the night sky. This revelation marked a turning point in Robert's understanding of the pyramid's construction and purpose. It affirmed his belief that these monumental structures were meticulously planned and designed with profound astronomical and symbolic significance. With this newfound insight, Robert's puzzle was finally solved, and he could see beyond conventional interpretations. The connection between the stars above and the pyramids below unveiled a deeper layer of meaning and purpose behind the architectural marvels of ancient Egypt. Orion's Belt is a star group consisting of three stars and is known as the Orion's Belt or the Orion's Belt because it is part of a star group known as Al-Jabbar. 
These stars are known by their Arabic names, Al-Nitaq, Al-Nilam, and Mintaka. Robert discovered that the layout of the Great Pyramids of Giza perfectly mirrored the alignment and proportions of these stars. The three pyramids of Giza, those of Khufu, Khafri, and Menkaur, align in a similar pattern to the stars of Orion's belt. Just as a line drawn through the centers of the stars Al-Nitaq and Al-Nilam leads to Mintaka slightly further away, a line connecting the centers of the pyramids, Khufu, Khafre, and Menkaur, extends to a point beyond, maintaining the same proportional relationship. Robert's discovery suggested a remarkable correspondence between the star sizes and luminosities and the pyramid's dimensions and arrangements. This insight opened up a new perspective on the purpose and design of these ancient monuments. Excited by his findings, Robert sought to share his theory with experts in Egyptology. He approached Dr. James, the director of the Egyptology department at the British Museum, who dismissed the idea as mere coincidence. Undeterred, Robert then engaged with Dr. Edwards, another respected scientist at the museum, who showed enthusiasm for the theory and encouraged further exploration. Robert's journey took an unexpected turn as he expanded his investigation beyond the Orion constellation. He began to see a broader correlation between the layout of Egyptian landmarks like the pyramids and the celestial configurations of stars in the sky. In his studies, Robert discovered a profound geographical alignment between the Nile River and the Milky Way. The Nile represented a terrestrial reflection of the celestial Nile, the Milky Way, mirroring the arrangement and symbolism of heavenly bodies on Earth. He observed that not only the pyramids of Giza, but also other significant structures from Egypt's fourth dynasty were meticulously positioned on the ground to mirror celestial groupings in the sky, particularly those associated with Orion and other star clusters. Robert's groundbreaking research has challenged the prevailing view of Egyptologists, who traditionally link the design of the pyramids to solar symbolism. He published his findings in archaeological journals, presenting a compelling argument for the deeper religious and astronomical significance behind the construction of these ancient wonders. However, Many people are not receptive to this idea for two main reasons. Firstly, Egyptologists argue that the pyramids are an integral part of religious beliefs centered around sun worship. The very shape of the pyramid symbolizes the sun's rays penetrating through clouds and illuminating the earth. Egyptian religion prominently features Ra, the sun god, and the pyramids are understood as launching pads facilitating the pharaoh's journey to join Ra under the sun. Moreover, all pyramids are situated westward in the Nile Valley, facing towards the sunset, where the kingdom of the dead lies. This association suggests the relationship between the sun and the pyramids and their associated rituals. In contrast, Boval's theory asserts a definite link between the pyramids and the stars, proposing that the pyramid builders believed in the stars rather than the sun. This challenges the traditional view that the kings of the dynasty were responsible for constructing the pyramids. Secondly, Egyptologists maintain a consensus that the pyramids were constructed during the early dynastic period around 2500 BCE. Boval's theory suggests a much earlier construction time frame, around 10,000 years BCE. This conflicts with established timelines, posing a significant challenge to the field of Egyptology, which has been understood and studied for over two centuries. It raises questions about many scholarly works, publications, and studies, attributing pyramid construction as a solar symbol, as well as theories about ancient Egyptian construction methods Additionally, it casts doubt on interpretations of other monuments, such as obelisks, solar boats, and temples, believed to be associated with sun worship. Despite facing opposition and skepticism from long-standing archaeologists, Boval remains steadfast in his theory. He continues to advocate for his ideas through books, television interviews, and lectures worldwide garnering support from thousands of individuals drawn to the clarity and logical reasoning in his arguments. Despite initial doubts and opposition, 
Robert's work has paved the way for new insights into the astronomy and engineering of ancient Egyptians. His journey underscores the importance of questioning established beliefs and exploring unique connections between human achievements and celestial phenomena. Most importantly, it fuels the search for the true dating of ancient architectural structures and the mysteries behind them. Age of the Pyramids. In his research, Boval proposes that an ancient civilization constructed the pyramids around 10,500 BCE, then mysteriously disappeared, leaving scattered traces of their existence. Geological evidence suggests that this advanced civilization flourished before the last ice age, around 10,000 to 15,000 years ago, and its demise may have been due to glacial activity. According to this theory, the Giza pyramids and the Great Sphinx were not built by figures commonly attributed to them like Khufu and Khafre, but by a much older civilization. Supporters of this theory believe it could explain why the Giza pyramids lack any references to the Fourth Dynasty, which, according to official sources, was responsible for their construction. Additionally, no mummy of a pharaoh from this Fourth Dynasty associated with the pyramids has ever been discovered. Khufu's tomb has never been found, and when Belzoni first entered Khafre's pyramid in 1818, he found it empty. Similarly, when Colonel Weiss first opened Menkaure's pyramid in modern history in 1837, he found it similar to the other pyramids. Weiss discovered an empty sarcophagus, except for some bones later dated to Christian times, about 2,500 years after the pyramid was built, have proposed the hypothesis that the absence of mummies from the fourth dynasty pharaohs and others could be due to tomb robbery. However, the complete absence of any inscriptions regarding pharaohs from the fourth dynasty or other dynasties is noteworthy. This theory could be a convincing explanation for some prominent phenomena, such as the advanced technological feats in ancient Egypt in the period immediately following the Stone Age, according to official accounts. The presence of large seafaring vessels in the Egyptian desert, natural erosion factors, and clear evidence of water on the Sphinx. The Sphinx was nearly buried under sand for much of its 5,000-year history. This suggests it was carved during a wetter period in the Egyptian climate about 10,000 years ago. Additionally, there are striking similarities between ancient Egyptian, Mexican, and Peruvian civilizations. Apart from the pyramid shapes, these civilizations share common symbols and meanings associated with their structures. For example, the three large pyramids at Teotihuacan in Mexico have similar dimensions to those at Giza. Two of the three pyramids in both locations are aligned in parallel, with an imaginary line passing through their centers, while the third pyramid slightly deviates to the left. Furthermore, According to ancient texts and carvings, both Egyptian and South American pyramids were considered places where humans become gods. Ancient Astronaut Theory The gap between magic and remarkable scientific advancements is just a thin veil. It's simple. If you were to time travel and show ancient Egyptians a smartphone, they would regard you as divine and the smartphone as a miraculous creation. Therefore, some researchers argue that the pyramids and many other impressive achievements of ancient Egypt may have been influenced or even directly supported by extraterrestrial entities, which ancient civilizations might have perceived as gods. This concept is encapsulated in the ancient astronaut theory, which proposes the idea of extraterrestrial beings interacting with ancient humans. During that era, they might have imparted crucial aspects of technology, knowledge, and spiritual wisdom to ancient civilizations, which were then passed down by these celestial visitors. Among all those exploring various theories regarding the possibility of the existence of extraterrestrial beings, Swiss author Erich von Daniken is perhaps the most famous and notorious figure. Von Daniken's fame stems from two things. Firstly, his fame can be attributed to his book Chariots of the Gods, published in 1968, in which he first proposed the concept of the ancient astronaut theory, which is the second reason behind von Daniken's prominence. 
He believed that ancient people had contact with visitors from outer space who taught humanity many things, including mathematics, engineering, technology, agriculture, and more. It is this belief that made him one of the earliest and most outspoken proponents of the famous ancient astronaut theory. The ancient astronaut theory suggests that ancient engineering marvels that astound modern humans were either built by extraterrestrial beings themselves or constructed by humans under the guidance of their extraterrestrial mentors. Some notable ancient megalithic monuments that may be mentioned include the Great Pyramids of Egypt, Stonehenge in the United Kingdom, the Moai of Easter Island, and many others. All these ancient artistic works found worldwide depict characters and imagery of these gods as if they were alien civilizations from another planet that came down from the sky. Evidence is drawn from various sources, ranging from hieroglyphic texts recorded in pyramids to ancient scriptures where references to weapons and divine vehicles resemble extraterrestrial spacecraft. Some rock paintings found in the Chhattisgarh Caves in India have sparked countless conspiracy theories related to extraterrestrial beings. While many still do not believe that these ancient paintings are evidence of extraterrestrial contact, local people and even researchers consider it a possibility. The cave paintings depict scenes believed to have been painted over 10,000 years ago, showing strange creatures and UFO-like objects descending from the sky. The cave paintings describe some spheres that scientists have not been able to identify. The archaeological department in the region is said to have requested assistance from the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, in determining the unusual nature of the paintings. Is this the final evidence supporting the ancient astronaut theory's assumption that intelligent extraterrestrial beings visited Earth and interacted with humans in ancient and prehistoric times. According to J.R. Bahagat's observations, these paintings certainly depict nothing other than extraterrestrial beings. Archaeologists believe that evidence of a forbidden history only exists because it was carved in stone. In addition to the creatures and disc-shaped objects depicted, many paintings are ordinary depictions of humans, animals, and daily life around 8,000 years before the Common Era. However, it also astonishes many with some paintings describing kangaroos and giraffes, creatures that do not have origins in India, and fish-like creatures. These discoveries suggest that prehistoric humans may have seen or imagined creatures from other planets, so thorough research is needed to uncover more buried mysteries. Currently, no expert can provide clear answers on this topic. The paintings were done with natural pigments, almost unaffected by fading over time. The strange carvings depict figures holding objects resembling weapons and lack distinct features. Noses and mouths are missing, and in some images, they are even depicted wearing space suits. We cannot dismiss the imagination of ancient humans, but people often gravitated towards such ideas. What makes this story even more intriguing is perhaps the fact that similar ancient cave paintings have been found all over the world. It's as if ancient cultures worldwide saw something in the sky on a global scale, and perhaps among them, they felt compelled to inscribe it onto the stone in hopes that one day, their story would be deciphered. Egyptian God. The paintings in the Chhattisgarh Caves in India do not immediately evoke thoughts of ancient script on the venerable walls inside the pyramids. According to the ancient astronaut theory, the gods of ancient Egypt could be extraterrestrial Anunnaki from the planet Nibiru. These gods purportedly left their home planet Nibiru about 450,000 years ago to seek monatomic gold needed to repair the deteriorating atmosphere of their home planet. Their initial settlement was the base station at Edain, Garden of Aden, with the first ancient astronaut city-state established at Eridu. They assisted or directly established the first city as in Sumer, Central America, the Indus Valley, and the Nile. Additionally, the Anunnaki are said to be responsible for creating humans through DNA manipulation. 
current mainstream historical understanding of ancient Egyptian history does not consider the ancient astronaut hypothesis and the possibility that the ancient Egyptian gods were a race of extraterrestrial beings from another planet. However, texts within the ancient Egyptian pyramids contain records of real historical events about the days when the lineage of ancient astronaut, extraterrestrial gods known as Anunnaki wandered the Egyptian skies and walked upon its sands. The era of ancient extraterrestrial gods in ancient Egypt began with Ta, who, after the great deluge of ancient times, built the kingdom of the Nile Valley by executing diking works to raise land ridges from swampy pools after the flu. The Anunnaki, god Ptah, was succeeded by Ra, who later gave birth to Osiris and Seth. Conflict among the ancient Egyptian, extraterrestrial, gods is depicted in wall paintings, described by Zechariah Sitchin as the first pyramid war of Egypt. This information also appears in ancient Egyptian records at Saqqara, where we learn of the story of the ancient Egyptian extraterrestrial gods, including Osiris's death, the birth of Horus, and Horus's rule over Upper and Lower Egypt. The dynasty of Horus was followed by a series of god kings until the reign of Menes, the first human pharaoh, marking the end of the rule of the extraterrestrial gods of Egypt and the beginning of the period forming part of Egypt's traditional dynasty. In Egyptian cosmology, the pharaoh is considered the living Osiris, who after death journeys to rejoin the other gods in the house in the constellation of Orion. According to Sitchin's ancient astronaut hypothesis, the tradition of mummification originated from the initial mummification and resurrection of the alien Anunnaki god Osiris by Isis, who was also the alien Anunnaki goddess after Osiris was captured by the god. The Anunnaki rival Seth killed during the First Pyramid War was recorded at Saqqara, which, according to Zechariah Sitchin's ancient astronaut hypothesis, is a record of Anunnaki alien conflicts in the Nile Valley to gain control of the rebuilt Giza spaceport at Giza following the destruction of the first Sumerian spaceport in the Cataclysm. Therefore, this theory suggests that there is some basis for considering the idea that alien beings known as the Anunnaki ruled Egypt at some point in ancient history before the rule of the human pharaohs was established. In the end of days, Zechariah Sitchin suggests that the Anunnaki first left for Mars after the destruction of the Sinai Peninsula spaceport and the rise of Babylon under Marduk using the Mesoamerican bases at Nazca and Teotihuacan. However, the Enlilites were represented by the moon god, Sin, who later returned to replace Marduk as the chief god of Babylon under King Nabonidus. The response of Marduk and the Enchiites was to recruit Cyrus the Great, who then defeated Nabonidus and restored Marduk as king of Babylon. The Sumerian legacy of alien gods has found its way into modern religion, especially through abridged versions of Sumerian and later Babylonian texts, such as the Enuma Elish creation epic in the Bible, Hebrew saint. Therefore, it can be said that the Anunnaki gods of Nibiru shaped the world's leading monotheistic religions, starting with Judaism, followed by Christianity, and finally Islam. While researchers and scholars such as Graham Hancock and Dr. Heiser debate the validity of the ancient astronaut theory, the ancient astronaut theory still raises important unanswered questions. Words explaining human origins and how civilization has been technologically and socially designed since ancient times. The ancient astronaut theory is not always correct in its interpretation of some extraterrestrial artifacts, sometimes making exaggerated claims to bolster its support for the existence of alien civilizations in the past. However, there remain unanswered questions and many new lines of research that continue to develop, expanding and enriching our understanding of the human story. That's all the information that we have for you today.
Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.